How's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital, back with another Falcon tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about modulation. I've done another video about modulation, but this time I want to go more in depth on how to use it, how to set up your modulation, and how to interpret this little box, this modulation box at the bottom of the screen. So let's get started. I'm going to call up a new program and I'm going to put in a new oscillator and key group. So here's the oscillator, here's the key group, and you can see they automatically added in an envelope. That's important because every oscillator needs some sort of envelope um, or you don't get any velocity uh, sensitivity nor do you get like a nice smooth release on your sound. If I turn this off, it uh, doesn't have any velocity sensitivity and the release is kind of sharp and weird. So let's look at this section down here and see if we can decipher what's happening. At the top here, you'll have a name and that name is going to be the name of a physical control, not a physical, but a virtually physical control that you see in this main edit window. If you see a little fuchsia halo around a knob, that means it is being modulated by something. And when you click on one of these knobs, you can see what's modulating it. So let's go back to our key group gain. Here it says key group volume. So we know that we are selected on this one. And under it, it will list all of the modulators that are modulating the volume knob. So right here on this bar, this represents a connection. So you can have one or more of these. If there's none of these, like if I click on this pan, I don't see any of those little bars. That means pan has no selection for modulation. So going back to gain here, let's interpret what this bar is saying. It's saying that volume is being modulated by an envelope. It's a key group envelope. And right here is where we can control how much that uh, envelope is affecting the volume knob. This is an inversion knob, and this is a mapping uh, button that we can go into a little bit later. So let's add a new modulation. Um, in previous videos, you may have seen me add a modulation by right clicking and then going to one of these modulators and adding a new one. Um, I'm going to teach you a different way this time. Let's click here. This is going to add a modulation. And since we are next to the key group section, it's going to add a new key group modulator. So let's add an LFO. Now, right now, this LFO is not assigned to anything. We can find it under this key group right here, but there's no triangle next to it. That means there's no assignment for it. If we want to assign this LFO, we can simply click on this tab and um, drag it to whatever we want to modulate. Now the connection has been made and we can hear the result. If we come here and decrease the depth of the modulation by sliding this over, we'll get a better result. Now it's not being pinned to the ends of this knob's travel. If I click this button, instead of starting from the middle and going to the right, it'll start from the middle and go to the left. It inverts the modulation. But I can also invert the modulation by going over into negative numbers like this. This button here does mapping. This is maybe a little bit outside of what we're looking at today, but we can basically change the way that whatever modulator we're using will uh, interpret the movement of the knob. And you can do things like increase the frequency of a LFO or make the uh, travel, just do anything you want. You're able to really redo re the mapping however you want in this view. But maybe I'll go into that in a different video. So, as you can see here, we can also add layer level modulators and program level modulators if we hit this plus or this plus respectively. 
But what we see in this view down here is what is available to modulate what we see up here according to what level we're at. So to explain that a little better, I'm going to create um, another key group here. I'm going to create another la layer. And in that layer, I'm also going to create another key group. And if you see in this new layer and in this new key group, there's only this envelope listed here. We can't see the LFO that I just created because it is part of a different layer. So that key group, um, type LFO will not be available for this layer in this key group, so we don't see it down here. If I go back to the program level, then we can see it here again. So again, it is important to realize and to, to take note of where you are in your tree so that you can uh, know what to ex expect to see here. Um, but basically, when you're at the program level, any modulator in the um, entire patch will be accessible and you can uh, take it and use it to modulate things. So let's um, look at how the different modulators are uh, kind of grouped together. So you can see here, this is LFO1. Uh, but let's go in here and let's create another LFO1. And I'm also going to create an LFO2. So one thing to realize in Falcon, LFO1s are kind of all in a group. Uh, and so are, you know, uh, ADSR ones. If I make an ADSR, the first one is going to be kind of part of a group. So what, the way to think about this is if you are in another synth and let's say it has four LFOs and it's numbered one, two, three, four, those are going to be consistent throughout the interface. And if you want to access number one, you can access it from whatever oscillator. So the way to think about this in Falcon is it's almost like LFO one or or envelope one already exists and you're either bringing it into the patch or you're not. You're either bringing it into a certain layer or a key group or you're not, but it's still kind of a thing, right? So what I mean by that is if I go to the program level and I click on LFO one and then I change it to sample and hold, it's gonna change all the LFO ones to sample and hold. So here's one here, it's on sample and hold. There's another one here, it's on sample and hold. But LFO2 is still the way it was when I first created it. But again, if I go to group one on, from layer one and I create an LFO2, and then I go up to program level and I change it to chaos, then LFO2 on layer two, Key group one will be on chaos. So LFO twos are grouped together. LFO ones are grouped together. And any type of modulator is going to be grouped together with the first one that is created and the second ones are grouped with the second ones and so on. So I hope that makes sense. So that is important to know when you are changing things at the program level that you are going to be changing the other ones as well. But again, they will be able to be edited separately. If I go to LFO1, I change it to this one. It's not going to change this one. This one's going to remain sample and hold. So let's go through some presets and see if we can read them and figure out what's going on. One thing I want to point out is that these little arrows here will let you go through your presets. If I click this one, take me to the next preset. So let's see if we can read what's going on with one of these guys. Uh, so we have modulation chosen to look at and we're filtering out other things so we don't get distracted. 
And these are all the program level modulators. Uh, these ones with the circle next to them are going to be represented on the info panel here. So we can change things like the cutoff right from this panel. And then we have some external controls that can modulate this patch. Then if we look inside, we have some envelopes here and some LFOs. So if we look at this LFO, we can see there's key group filter cutoff. So if we go to the key group, we can see that there's a filter here and that we're controlling the cutoff with two LFOs and an envelope. I didn't talk about the sub over here, this uh, subcategory, but you can modulate basically this knob with another modulator. So if you want the depth of the modulation to change over time, you can do that by assigning one of the modulators here. And you see this one is actually being assigned to a velocity. So if I hit the key softly, the depth is very low. If I hit it harder, the depth is higher. So that LFO2 will modulate the cutoff the harder I hit. Now, if I don't want that to happen, or if I don't want anything um, that is modulating a particular parameter to, if I want it to stop, I can just turn off the modulation connection. And the reason why that's a good deal is because I'm not actually turning off the LFO. If that LFO is also doing something to something else, it will still keep doing what it's doing to something else, but its effect on the selected parameter will end at that point. So another thing I wanted to show you about this modulation section is that a lot of the modulators have this little button here and this gives us tempo sync. When it's lit up, that means that the, um, like for LFOs, the frequency here will change to note divisions and in uh, things like the um, this multi-stage envelope, you'll get beat divisions to mark the time instead of uh, time uh, markers. So that can be a very powerful tool to use. And then here you get presets. So if you click here, you've got a lot of different presets that you can use for this envelope. We can try a different one just to see its effect. So again, to read one of these presets, we want to keep in mind that all of the ones with the halos here are being modulated. We also want to uh, Keep in mind, we can see all of the modulations in the tree as long as this is selected and we can go through and click on different ones. And then we'll see a modulator here and all of the things that are, can, I'm sorry, we'll see a, a parameter here and all the things that are modulating that parameter in these blocks. This section down here isn't necessarily what is going to be modulating this thing here, but it is all of the modulators that are available for modulation for whatever level you're at. So I hope that all makes sense. It's kind of a lot. This is a little bit longer video than some of the other ones, but I wanted to give you those tools so that you can use your modulation to the fullest and also that you can read through the presets and see what the sound designers are doing with modulation and you can use those techniques. So I hope that's helpful. If there's any additional questions about modulation, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll, I'll either try to just contact you directly or do another video. And I hope these were helpful. So if you like these videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to do a, a review of Falcon pretty soon. And I have, I've been really glowing about this synth. 
Uh, but in, in the review, I'm going to be a little bit more critical. There, there are some things about Falcon that I think need to be improved. So it's not all sunshine and rainbows. But if you're interested in that, subscribe and stay tuned. And that's probably going to be coming out within uh, the next week or so. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching this. And please enjoy being created.